Hello and welcome to another demonstrational video here at MB Motomes. This time it's the Leica Ecovip H4012 DS. So as always we'll uh, run around the outside of the vehicle first showing you uh, what you need to know there and then we'll move on to the inside. Uh, okay so as you can see uh, this is an A-class motorhome. Uh, the bonnet catch is in the normal place where you would expect to see it on any any other motorhome, uh, just here. Uh, so the bonnet catch is this handle here. So if you give that a pull, that releases the bonnet. While we're here, you've got darkening blinds for the side window, uh, as you can see there. So what you do, you just unclip that from the door, this little catch here from the door. And then draw that across and it's magnetic on here so there's a magnetic strip there and a magnetic strip on this side pull that across and that darkens out your side window uh, pretty much the same principle on the other side uh, you unclip this little clip here so sorry for the for the windscreen side unclip that little clip there and they draw across uh, for this quarter window here and again it's a magnetic strip so that darkens that bit off so that's your quarter window and then the same sort of thing on the driver's side um, that little clip there unclip that draw that across again it's magnetic for the windscreen uh, you pull these together here and pull down and as you can see it's a bit difficult with one hand so there we go I drew that down to the bottom so that's your windscreen completely darkened off as well as your side windows, your quarter window, and your passenger window. Okay, so I've retracted those now. Just while we're here, I'll show you the uh, the seat mechanism. To get these seats to swivel around, this is the driver's seat here. Uh, it's this little bar here. If you pull it that way, it will allow you to swivel the seat around. Okay, so that's your captain's chair. If you pull that bar like I just showed you, swivel the seat around, you've got your lounge set up. So you've got your seats facing into, into the lounge. There is a rocker mechanism, so you can uh, sort of uh, recline the seat to and fro like so. And it's those little levers, those two levers, which are just there. And then to recline the actual seat back, it's just a quarter turn on this thing here. Now, you do need to completely fold the back flat in order to get the bed down, but I'll show you that when we go inside, um, you know, for the full demonstration inside. But you just sort of twist that quarter of a turn and it allows you to fold the seat down. <clears throat> okay, so, while we're here as well, uh, this is where your diesel fuel is filled up. Uh, so you do need a key for that. Uh, got your key here. Um, so you need to put your key in. Spin that around um, and it's lockable with the with the engine key. That's where your add blue additive goes. Um, so yeah, it comes up on the dash to tell you when that is uh, requires filling. Uh, but you've got your diesel and your diesel fuel additive. Normally, if this was a standard uh, coach built motor, you'd have a, a panel here, just in this area here, showing you about your tyre pressures. It's actually better to refer to the tyres themselves because they're actually uh, specialist Motome tyres which uh, can be pumped up to a higher pressure. Um, you see on here it's got the camping uh, mark on it there. They're actually rated for mud and snow but again they can, they can, be, they can be pumped up to a higher pressure uh, than a standard tyre. The reason for that is they've got reinforced side walls, so if they're left for long periods in one position, you don't get um, a flat spot where it's been sat. Okay, so we've we've un we've uh, released the bonnet catch, as you can see there. I'm just going to pull the bonnet up now, and the bonnet catch is just above the Leica badge here, and it's like a yellow that that there. So if you reach in, pull the yellow tab up, and that gets you uh, access to the bonnet. Okay, so we've got the bonnet open. Uh, obviously, access because it's uh, an A class motor, uh, just slightly restricted. Uh, but with the, con the uh, washer fluid is filled here, so that's just off from the actual com uh, bonnet compartment. Under here, then, you've got your coolant, brake fluid reservoir, uh, oil fill. Now, it doesn't have a dipstick by the looks of it. The, the more modern engines tend not to. It'll come up on the dash to tell you uh, 
if your oil is uh, low or high. Your chassis plate's just here. <laughs> Moving on along, if you ever need to jump start this vehicle or jump start another vehicle from it, then your positive terminal is just tucked under here. And if you can see, it's that metal tab just there, this one. Okay, so that, if you sort of go behind this tube here, that's your, where your positive terminal goes, that's your, your red cable. And then the black or earth cable goes onto this little tab just here. So that's your earth, and then your positive terminal goes onto the uh, little uh, blade which I showed you just on that side there. To close the bonnet, um, just, just push it to, and then in the centre where I showed you where that um, yellow release tab was, just give it a firm press in the centre. Okay, so moving on around the motorhome, um, we've dealt with the uh, fuel. This is just a locker, so you've got access to storage in here, and there's also it's also lit in there. So yeah, this locker, it actually goes all the way through, you can see there, so the actual floor that you're walking on inside the motorhome isn't the floor that's on the chassis, so you get this double floor arrangement, as you can see it's reinforced with that sort of stilt there. Um, You've just got the caging in here for the for the seat belts, but yeah, that's storage. Some people call it call it a ski locker, so you can actually get long uh, long items in there, such as skis. This is a vent for the boiler. When the boiler is operational, it'll vent um, its exhaust gas. If you've got it running on gas, you'll see condensation rising up from here. Um, perfectly normal to see steam uh, rising from there, as you would, you know, a domestic boiler at home. Next thing along we have the gas locker, so this will take two, uh, it'll certainly take two six kilo propane bottles. Uh, what happens is one bottle goes in here, the straps go around the bottle, another one goes in here, again straps around the bottle. It's got an inline regulator, so what you do is you, you get your bottles in situ, put this end into the bottle itself, and that end um, that goes onto the threaded thing onto the pre uh, pressure regulator here. This so this regulates the pressure from the from the uh, bottles and stops. Well, it just regulates the pressure. There's a diaphragm inside it. It's actually got a, a small valve in here. If uh, if it senses that there's gas pressure and there's an impact of the vehicle, so you're involved in a in an accident, this little uh, tab here, this yellow thing in the middle, will pop out. Uh, it, what it does is it switches the gas supply off to the motor. So to get that back in, there's a little tool, um, like a spanner, uh, it comes with it, and we'll point that out for you when you pick it up. And you just push that in and turn it anti-clockwise. You can actually do it with your finger, but there's a little tool um, that comes with it. So that's the tube for the gas, your gas regulator, and your bottles go in here. Moving on then, we have next to that the... Um, toilet cassette housing so that's where all the toilet waste goes into here and obviously will require emptying so what you do is you all, this is lockable as well so you use the uh, like key uh, the keys here so you've got two keys you've got the fiat key and a spur fiat key which is that one and then all the rest of the motor on the habitation side of things is uh, operated via this key like so Okay, so that will lock this uh, toilet cassette. So I'll open that up. And then when this is ready for emptying and there's an indication on the actual toilet inside the motor to tell you when that needs emptying. To empty it, you uh, open it up, lift this little tab up here and slide the cassette out. There's a handle on the top like so. And then when it's uh, ready for emptying, so in theory this would be full of toilet waste, you slide that forward take the cap off the end and just incidentally before I put that back on this is like a measuring cup as well so this will allow you to measure the chemical out should you need to so with the cap off I'm just going to put it back on for now but with the cap off turn the whole cassette upside down and pour the waste away out of this tube here as you're doing so press this button in what it does is it lets air in here and shoots the liquid out there so what it does is it stops it from uh, glugging, um, you know, you'll get a, a spurt of waste coming out and then it'll suck the air back into the container which prevents that by letting air in here so it just sort of shoots it out. 
when it's been emptied what i would tend to do is fill it back up with fresh water again swill it around empty it again and then it's ready to use before you use it you need to put the chemical into here so if you're using the blue chemical you can measure out the required amount via that cup on the end of there uh, put the chemical into here a little bit of water in the bottom and then it's ready to use again you can also use the green chemical which in theory allows you to uh, dump the waste anywhere but the blue chemical certainly breaks down the solids and the smells a lot more efficiently and that needs to be disposed of at a designated disposal point when you're going to put this back in make sure that this is straight this is called the blade here so we're opening the blade up like so make sure that that's uh, closed and this mechanism here is pointing in that direction you will not get this cassette back in if it isn't and don't don't force it because you'll break this mechanism slide the cover back on and then it's ready to use again you'll notice that this has wheels on the bottom and this orange handle here extends like so and that allows you to wheel the cassette over to the disposal point for ease of use so when you're ready to put it back in when you're ready to put it back in make sure the nozzle's like that and your and your handle is clipped back into its little thing there there's a handle on the top just push this back in and make sure that that orange handle goes into the little recess there and that's ready to use again next one along is your mains cable so this is where your mains cable would go into this feeds the motorhome with the electric power that is required so uh, you won't get any mains appliances working inside the motorhome without this being plugged in uh, also operates the charger unit so it replenishes your 12 volt batteries uh, it doesn't come with a cable um, but when you if you get a, an outdoor electrical cable it's got like a lid on it so you get a flat end like that it has a lid the lid slides into a recess just in there like so uh, and then it connects up your electric when you want to release it there's a little tab here if you press that down and pull the cable out at the same time it allows you to release the cable uh, next one along is the fresh water so this is where you fill up your motor home it's got an onboard tank uh, a good substantial size tank uh, what you do is you just unlock this um, like you would a fuel filler just be careful when you're opening this what you've got to do is turn so that's locked you've got to make sure that you turn the barrel uh, independently of the cap so I've just turned the barrel uh, independently of the cap. If you try and turn the barrel, sometimes it turns the whole mechanism and you won't, you won't get the cap out. Once you've done that, push this in slightly uh, and turn. See, it's got those little tabs on it and that's how you gain access. You just put a hose pipe into there and literally fill it until it pours back out. Um, just, just fill that until it, it, it's filled the nozzle and pours back out. Obviously, it's only fresh water, so there's no danger in doing that. Uh, there's an indication on the control panel to tell you how full that is uh, just if you want a quick reference but you'll know it's full because it'll literally pour back out as I just described um, it is important that water is drained from this motorhome there's three places that you need to do it and I'll come to those in a second um, yeah so it, it, the reason that that's important is if uh, water's left in the motorhome uh, you can imagine a tank full of water in there uh, if it's left in there number one it's not very uh, clean it what you know you get stagnant water building up in the tank you don't want that so if you're not going to use it for any length of time drain it down uh, the other thing is if you leave it in there in it's freezing conditions water will freeze inside the tank expand inside the tank and, and possibly crack the pipework and the tank itself but we'll come to that in a minute i'm just highlighting the importance of it so on the floor here we've got some bits that just came out of the motorhome this customer has asked us to fit a television for them which the box and uh, instruction manuals etc is there this uh, box here is the puncher repair kit so it doesn't have a spare wheel if you get a puncher you need to use this uh, this handle here this one is the winder for the awning and there is a separate video on our YouTube channel that shows you how to operate the awning but you can see it's got like a hook on the end um, and that goes into the uh, uh, this winder goes into the awning itself and then you sort of wind it and uh, draw the awning out 
These are the pegs for the feet on the awning. So when you draw the awning out, they peg the feet down. Uh, again, it'll become clear if you watch the video, and I'll try and remember to send that along with the um, along with the video for the motorhome itself. There's also a tensioning bar uh, for the awning fabric. If you draw the awning out, this bar in this box here will actually um, it, it sort of pushes the leading edge of the awning outwards to tension the fabric. Uh, of the awning itself but again there's a video on that separately okay so working on around the motorhome again then uh, the reversing camera lens is just there uh, just uh, in the middle of the high level brake light so just make sure that the lens on that is kept clean if uh, you've got moisture on the lens itself you're going to get a distorted image so if it's really really wet you know just be careful what you're uh, just, be, just be careful that the the image isn't distorted as you as you reverse it and it'll actually show you the back panel of the motor as you reverse it so it's, it's quite good okay on around the motor again then this is what we call the garage so this is the storage area in here there's a couple of things to mention there's a weight plate there with 250 kilos which is uh, huge for any motorhome so you, you know a quarter of a ton this this garage will take uh, in weight for loading so in here, again, as I said, a couple of things. This switch here, as indicated by this sticker, is the drain for the waste water. So everything that goes down the shower or down the sink uh, accumulates in a waste water tank, and obviously that needs draining. So to drain it, what you do is you push that button down. It opens the valve up, and if you've done that, it will remain open, okay? To close it and therefore retain the water in the uh, wastewater tank, you just push it back up like so and that will remain closed. You've got a mains outlet and that's your light switch from inside the motor. So that switch there operates the light just there. These are the seat backs for if you want to make the dinette into a seat belted seat. Okay, so it's fairly straightforward. You, you can see these little if you can see those there it'll become clear when I uh, when I go inside the motorhome these seat backs basically just sit in position um, when you transform the dinette into a seat belted seat so that that's what they are um, again it'll become clear when we go inside these are these little ringlets here are for storage and um, so if you wanted to uh, secure something down in the in the motor in the garage itself you, you use these ringlets to maybe use bungee straps or ratchet straps and as you can see you can tighten those up if you unscrew them you can slide them along the rail and um, so the ones on this side if you wanted to put them on the other side what you do is take them up to the release point there and then just slide them on the on, on to the other side in there is the where the water pump is so that pumps the water around the motorhome and there's a yeah the blue thing which is just here is like a diaphragm it regulates the pressure so you don't get any water, uh, water pressure surges uh, inside uh, your water system okay so again working on methodically around the motorhome I'll just show you so this is quite a sturdy mechanism for locking the garage you can see the handle there turns these like so so to, what you do is you close it turn the handle into that position lock the barrel and push in like so and then to release it simply just unlock the barrel turn the handle and that gains you access to your garage so that's the awning which is just there the winder uh, that I showed you that sort of metal uh, handle goes into the little loop which is just on the end of there but again it's on a, it's on a separate video that one right it's this um, this side of the motorhome here you've got two vents this is for the fridge <coughs> it allows the fridge to breathe it draws cool air, air in at the bottom vent and expels it at the top so it's like a circulation 
Uh, just make sure that those are kept clear, clear of debris uh, and you're not sort of parked right up to an obstacle. Let's say there's, there was a hedge here or a wall and you're parked right up against it, uh, you could prevent the fridge from uh, circulating its air supply. Uh, again, just a locker on the other side. So this was the other end of the ski locker, which went right the way through the floor. And uh, so, yeah, that's just, just a locker on the outside of the motor. So we'll move on to inside the van now. Um, okay, so first things first, uh, the bed, so this is an A-class motorhome, it's got a bed which drops down from the roof here. So as I mentioned about the seats, in order to get this A-class bed down and in the usable position, you've got to um, put the seat backs down, and as I said, it's just a quarter of a turn on this thing here, and then you can lay those flat, so I'll do that now. Okay, so the seat backs are laid flat. To get the bed down, you just release this catch here and then you pull. Just a bit tricky with one hand. You, you, you need to, this, this thing here, you need to sort of like push up a little bit and pull this panel um, out that way. So you sort of put your hand behind it and pull the panel out that way. Okay, so that's the uh, A-class bed. Um, in its usable position um, it's necessary to take those backing cushions off in order for that cupboard to sort of slide into that position and on the other side as well so yeah the uh, mechanism for the bed is just show you a bit better like that you've got to pull that down in order to get the pull that towards you in, in order to get the uh, the bed to go down you've got lighting up here and obviously a skylight which does have blinds on it the blinds and the fly screens for the uh, skylights are operated like that so that's your blind and that's your fly screen and they separate like that okay so that's the uh, A-class bed okay so again moving on around the motor in a methodical way this dinette here um, is where the boiler is housed so the boiler is housed underneath that seat um, I'm going to take these cushions off in a minute to show you uh, the seat belt arrangement, uh, but that's that's where the boiler is housed. It's important because there's a drain valve for that boiler. Uh, as I was saying about draining water out of the motor, it's very important that uh, all the water is drained out of the boiler as well. So you've got um, a vessel full of water in the boiler here. Okay, so uh, I'll strip the cushions back and I can show you a little bit better. Okay, so I've stripped the cushions back and lifted this lid up here. So that's that's where the boiler's housed. Um, that, that's your boiler. Um, you don't really need to do anything with the boiler itself, but just here is a valve. Okay, so this, this mechanism here. What this does is it senses the temperature, uh, the ambient temperature. If it senses that the temperature's got to six degrees in this area, um, it will automatically drop the water out of the boiler. Okay, so if you come to the motor and it's been a cold spell, there's no point switching on your hot water tap because it'll just literally pour straight onto the onto the floor. That is now in the open position. To close it, you turn the blue dial, diamond shaped dial around on the top and push that button in there. If you come to it and that button's popped out and this is in that position it's dropped all the water out of the boiler it's it's a frost frost protection to uh, assist uh, well it's safety uh, safety reasons to stop the boiler from freezing and uh, damaging damaging the boiler so in order to get hot water through your system and heat up in the boiler this valve has got to be like that this little door here, what that is there for is if you've got the um, seat belt set up, the passenger's legs go down here and the cushions sit on top of here. And then those seat backs that I showed you that are in the garage, the uh, little legs that were on those seat backs go into here. And then there's like a screw uh, cap that sits into there. So you put the seat back uh, in this position here. Okay, so this is the seat that I took out of the garage, the backing for it. That mechanism goes into the screw, which is just here. You've got your seat belt on this side, and then your receiver for the seat belt is just here. 
Okay, so then you use the uh, cushions from the uh, that we're making up this this bench seat here uh, to uh, fill in the bits of your uh, for your for your seat belted seats, and then the passengers' legs go down there. And it's exactly the same operation on the other side. Okay, so with the cushions back off, this little section here, you can see how that comes across, and then there's. Uh, a piece in there that that sits into so this comes across like so and then this comes over the top and then that sits into that groove like so and that makes the base back up for your um, side seats okay and that's the uh, side seating made back up Exactly the same operation on that side uh, using the seat back that goes into there. Uh, the table is a foldable table, comes across like so. Uh, it's got a uh, strengthening piece on there. Okay, and then it's movable and you can lock it in position by just closing that clasp up. But this allows you to push the table um, further into the dinette area. Okay, so these side cupboards here, you open them by just giving it one push. So you pull it and then pull it, you've got to sort of pull it twice basically. Um, so that's closed. If you pull it once and then pull it again, uh, it allows you to open the over cab. Uh, sorry, the uh, head lockers, the draw fronts and all the rest of the catches, you press once and then it'll allow you to retract those and then to close them, push the um, handle in like I've just shown. Okay, so here we've got the control panels. Um, just over the entrance door here, we've got the control panels. The first one here is the heating controls. So to wake this up and switch it on, press the button like so. Long press the button. Okay. So it's like a wheel. You, you turn this wheel around uh, and it takes you through the menus. So the first one here, we've got the wheel flashing, uh, the symbol flashing there on the temperature for the motor. So if you press the center of the wheel, uh, it'll allow you to select the temperature that you want. So let's say you want it 20 degrees You just give it another press in the center and that will keep the motor home at 20 degrees The next one along is your water. So if you select that And um, it's you've got the heating of the water. So switch that's at the moment is switched off You've got eco at 40 degrees hot at 60 degrees boost what boost does is it takes all the uh, fuel away from the heating of the motorhome and allocates it to the heating of the water uh, So there are the three settings that you've got for your water So yeah boost will uh, take all the, all the uh, Power from the um, heating of the motorhome and allocate it to the heating of the water next one along uh, is uh, The fan speed if you set your temperature here to room temperature at sort of, I don't know, 22 degrees. Then the fan will run at a speed which is uh, relevant to um, it reaching 22 degrees as fast as possible. If you've got the heating switched off, like so, it'll allow you to go into the fan and just vent. So okay, so it'll just, um, it'll just vent the ambient temperature air around the motor. Uh, this will allow you to set your timer so you can switch the heating on at a certain time, go off at a certain time, and this sets your time uh, of day. And then there's a settings menu here. Uh, I won't go into that for the purposes of this video, but it, uh, it'll allow you to go into the settings. Okay, so that concludes the um, control panel for the for the heating um, it all runs off gas so there's no option to uh, change that on this model next one along is the control panel 
So you switch the control panel 12 volt system on and off via that button there. The next one down shows you your battery condition. So we've got the engine battery as denoted by this little symbol here at 12.9, the leisure battery at 12.4 and it's drawing 5.7 amps. Next one along is your water tank situation. Okay, so your fresh water tank uh, as denoted by that little symbol there. We haven't got any in there. And then your wastewater tank is shown there. That switches your 12 volt lights on inside the motorhome. That's your awning light for outside. That's your water pump. So that switches your water pump on and off uh, and allows water to come through your tap. When you first fill up with water, what you've got to do is pump the water through from your fresh water tank through all the pipe work and eventually out of your tap. So what you need to do is come over to your tap, switch your tap on uh, and wait until you get a pure flow of water coming out of your tap. Don't switch your heating uh, of the water on here until you've got a pure flow of water coming out of your tap. The reason for that is you'll just be heating thin air in the boiler and it can damage the boiler. So you need to purge the system through first by switching your pump on here, filling up, fill up your fresh water tank, switch your pump on, wait until you get a pure flow of water coming out of your um, tap, and then you can switch your hot water on. Obviously making sure that the valve is closed where I showed you just where uh, the boiler is. Okay, uh, moving on then, we have the fridge. To switch the fridge on, you press this button in here. Okay, so it'll come up on the dash, on the uh, control panel there. This will allow you to use three power sources, 12 volt, gas, and mains. Okay, so if you select which power source you want, okay, so you've got auto, that will automatically change uh, the power source to the correct uh, power source. So if, let's say you're connected to mains electric, it will automatically find a mains electric. If you disconnect from mains but you've got a gas supply, it will select gas automatically. And when, when your engine's running and you've not got mains or gas, it will run on the 12 volt, which is denoted by that little symbol there. It will also allow you to manually select the power source that you require so let's say you want to to run on gas all the time then you can override that by uh, selecting gas uh, just there but what i would do is leave this on auto so that it automatically selects the most relevant power source uh, and then you don't have to manually change it over to come out of that menu like so um, and then you can select the temperature uh, that you want the fridge to run at. If it's boiling hot outside, then you want the fridge to work a little bit harder. If it's really freezing cold, then you don't need the fridge to work quite as hard because it'll just end up icing up. Um, if the fridge is full, then you need the fridge just turned up that little bit higher as well. Okay, so the fridge will uh, open both sides. To switch the fridge off, it's just a long press on, in, on the wheel in the centre. Fridge will open both sides, like so, and like so. Uh, if you're going to leave the fridge for any length of time, um, so leave the motor home, you know, if you're going to lay it up and not use it, then just make sure that the fridge is left slightly ajar, uh, otherwise you'll get stagnant air building up in the fridge and it'll start to smell. Above the fridge you've got the uh, oven, and the controls for that are just on this uh, here. Okay, so you select your required temperature, press the button in and you can hear it clicking away. Obviously you need gas connected for this, wait until it lights at the back there. Once it's lit, wait 20 seconds and then release the button here. So like you're lighting a domestic hob. Okay, that's okay. So working on around the motor again then, we have the washroom you can separate this off and also there's a sliding door here so this whole corridor ends up being toilet and washroom so it's private from that end and also when you draw this door across it's private from that end to use the toilets what you do just lift the lid this handle here opens and closes the blade which I showed you on the cassette outside uh, so the process is lift the lid up open the blade via that sliding mechanism there open the blade up Use the toilet, 
press the flush button, which is that blue button there, uh, and then close the blade back up. You close the blade back up because obviously there's liquid in here. If you're driving around and you don't close the blade, well, toilet waste could spill over the side. There's an indication on a little illuminated LED there to tell you when the toilet requires emptying, so it just tells you whether it's full. But you can actually see down into there, particularly if you're using the blue uh, chemical, it's bright blue, so you can actually see down into there. But as I said, the blue chemical breaks down the smells uh, very efficiently anyway. Your light switch for the bathroom is just in here. People uh, can uh, miss that. But uh, yeah, that's the light switch for the blue area final things then um, the water tank when you're filling up your fresh water tank is housed just underneath this cover here and to drain this down it's this little wheel here so you can see this is your fresh water tank to close the valve on the fresh water tank turn this dial just finger tight uh, clockwise okay so that's closed this will allow you to drain the tank down to 20 liters so the reason for that is you can calculate weights easily 20 liters is 20 kilos so what you do to do that is turn this wheel slowly until you hear it click Okay, so once it's gone past that click, that's your 20 litres. It'll drain the tank down to 20 litres. To then fully drain the tank, uh, you just give it maybe another turn and a half, and that will completely drain the tank down. The way this mechanism works is there's a rod connected to this threaded handle here that goes down into the bottom of the tank and uh, pulls up a plug in and out of the tank at the bottom. If you turn this completely, you know, keep turning it anti-clockwise, that will... Uh, pull the rod all the way out of the bottom and it'll come off its thread and it's just a plastic thread so that's why I'm saying don't over tighten it to once, once you feel it go past its click and then just finger tight to close the valve up uh, in cold conditions it's absolutely imperative if you're not using the motorhome you get all the water out of there so there's three things you need to do to drain the system down you've got your fresh water tank which I've just showed you the boiler at the front underneath the seating dinette and your wastewater tank which has got an electric drain valve which I showed you that was in the garage. Okay so that concludes the demonstrational video on this particular model and um, it may throw up some questions which we'd be more than happy to answer for you before you collect the motorhome or indeed on the day that you collect it and we very much look forward to seeing you on the happy day that you collect this brand new Leica EcoVip 4012DS.